Good morning, everyone. Like a good music teacher, we're going to start right on time today. Welcome to today's, I don't know, maybe 11th, could be 12th webinar, three months worth of webinars since the COVID-19 crisis hit. Today, we're going to be talking about rethinking the first nine weeks, a conversation for 712 music educators, band, choir, and orchestra. And if you're joining us from the elementary ranks, welcome. We have stuff for you and a big announcement for you next week. But today, we're going to be focusing on a deep dive into integrated thematic and instruction. And when we talked about it last week, it was such a resounding uh, success that we decided to give people just a little more information. Now, getting to the top of the news of the day, it's 108 degrees here in Phoenix, Arizona. Taylor Swift has released a new album last night, which apparently is getting rave reviews, and now the dark stuff. It looks like Top Gun is not going to be released until July of 2021. So for all you Goose, Maverick, and Kelly McGillis fans, you're going to have to wait six more months for that gem to hit the big screen. Welcome to today's conversation. Before we begin, uh, we want you to go to jointsll.com. That's jointsll.com and download the professional development certificate. Download all of the materials from today's webinar and so, so much more. We're excited to be here with you today, but we're going to start off with a confession, and it's just an honest confession, which you may already know. It may not be earth-shattering to you. It may not be a huge revelation, but it is to some of you, so let's just get it out there. I am an idiot. <laughs> Now, my kids, if they were here, would say, well, duh, dad. But so last last week after I got off the webinar, I went downstairs and got some coffee and my wife said, so how'd it go? I said, well, it went pretty well and good content and the, you know, Zoom didn't crash and life's good and people really seem to like, you know, the new, the curricula. And she goes, great. She goes, you mean the curricula you wrote? I go, yeah. She said the stuff that's out there. I go, yeah. She goes, that they could actually use. I go, yeah. She goes, did you bother to mention it? And I was like, I'm such an, it, no one can accuse me of being a salesperson. Clearly, I am not good at that. So within 10 minutes, I released an email and said, I'm really sorry. In fact, one of you even posted in the chat box, do you have a grading rubric? And I was like, I don't know, let me look. The grading rubric is sitting right there in the curriculum that I wrote, that's available for purchase. And somehow it slipped my mind. So I instantly sent out an email and said, hey, if you're looking for more resources, here's where it's available. And my inbox blew up. So clearly there was a need. There were people wanted to know more about this concept. And it started to formulate. And I wasn't sure if I was going to do another webinar on it, and which is why I call this a boutique webinar um, in that it's a deep dive on a single subject. And then I had a friend who's not in the March Band world um, call me up and say, hey, do you have a man, Scott? And I go, sure. She goes, well, my son is in a school and it's not too far from here. And they said, they're doing this thing called virtual marching band. I said, okay, um, what's the problem? She goes, well, correct me if I'm wrong. They're just going to you know, do Zoom stuff and then put it together in a video. I said, well, it depends on each program and you know, how they do it and the way they do it. But that's generally the concept as I understand it. She said, well, it's $400. And I was like stunned. I, was, I, I said, well, and she said, yeah. And I started to really think, and there's no judgment on anyone who's doing a virtual marching band, but there's 150 kids in that program. And I thought, that's $60,000. Is that the best way to spend $60,000? And so I jumped on a call with another friend of mine who's considering the concept um, in Northern California, super brilliant teacher. And I said, let's take a minute and rethink this. Let's really reimagine it with the end goal in mind of what do we want students to get? Now, as I mentioned last week, and this is going to be 98% brand new content for you today, there is a void that's created by the lack of whatever it is for you. Maybe it's your fall orchestra concert's been canceled. Maybe it's your choir leadership camp. Maybe it's your marching band season. That everyone has an it that they've lost to this. And I pray and hope that it's not an it of a human being that's on a ventilator or who has passed. But whatever it is, it's gone. And that void is there. And just because there isn't a Friday night football game doesn't mean there isn't a Friday night. Just because there isn't a Thursday night concert doesn't mean there isn't a Thursday night. Just because there isn't Monday night symphony rehearsal doesn't mean they don't have a Monday night. That we've got a void now. These kids have this void of time and more importantly, a void of experiences that we need to fill for them. That's what we're, pardon me, and that's what we're really trying to do is fill that void here. And the beauty is that we can fill it in any way that we dream. And I can't imagine, I mean, I really, I can't imagine a better time to be a good teacher. 
I really can't imagine. I obviously, to be honest with you, I can't imagine a worse time to be a bad teacher, but I can't imagine a better time to be a good teacher because the world is your oyster. You don't have festivals to worry about. You don't have grading rubrics. You don't have adjudicators. You don't have a performance that you get to reinvent from a blank canvas, a blank canvas to create anything that you want. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're band, choir, orchestra, and everything that we share today is meant to give you a tool, a color to paint on that canvas, a different brushes, if you will, a different medium, a different uh, technique that you can use. So you can take a little bit of what we share. You can take some of what we share. You can take most of what we share. You can take all of what we share. You can take none of what we share today. Our goal is just to provide you with real tools to, for real solutions, for real problems in real time. So let's begin. Let's talk about what we're doing here, which is this. We want to talk I've always said that teaching music is our professional responsibility and there's no excuse to do it poorly. I don't fear the loss of teachers to our profession. I fear the loss of good teachers to our profession. And I really mean that when I say that, that this is our professional responsibility and I take it very, very, very seriously. That responsibility to provide a high quality music and education, scope and sequence and pedagogy that's appropriate to the child so that they can progress in life and in music. But teaching personal developments are privilege. So my, uh, my wife, uh, when we got married, I did what every woman dreams for their honeymoon. I took her to band camp. No, that's a true story. And I'm not going to go into the details, but it's a really good story. But I remember she sat across me. It was day three of camp. And she sat across me and she said, God, I, I envy you. Now, my wife uh, eventually became a, a guidance counselor and then guidance counselor department chair. But at that time, she was a classroom teacher. She was um, a hero teacher, taught in a, a CTE a department. And I said, why? And she said, you're like you're like a surrogate father to these kids. Like you, we teachers, we get involved in this profession because we want to change lives. And that's universal across all teachers. But the thing is, you actually get to do it. Like you see these kids more by the end of band camp than I see in the first quarter. You see these kids more by the end of September than I see in an entire year. You get them for four years. You get them for both semesters. You get them before school. You get them after school. You get them Monday nights. You get them Friday nights. You get them for sectionals. They hang out in your room at lunch. You get them on Saturdays. You truly are a surrogate parent to these. And you, you have the opportunity to really impact them. Now, please understand, like, Every teacher wants to change the child's life. And if you're a math teacher, if you're a science teacher, if you're a history teacher, you get 58 minutes to get your curriculum in, to get your materials in, to test, to assess, to present your, your scope and your sequence, and then analyze whether the kids got it, and then they're out that door. We get that 58 minutes, and we have that same responsibility. But then we get three more hours for a night rehearsal, and we get summer rehearsals, and we get them in our lunchroom, and we get them after school, we get them in a concert, we get them on Saturday, you know. And so... If we're not taking, I mean, if you think about that, the classroom for the average teacher in an extracurricular activity, and it's different for orchestra and choir and then it's for management, but the average teacher gets between 35 and 50% additional time with kids, 35 and 50% additional time outside of the classroom. And if we're not doing something outside of our scope and sequence with that time, then that's a pitch that came down the pike and we didn't swing at it. We didn't swing. What are we doing here? Let's swing. That's kind of what today's about. It, it like, you know, when the pitch is coming down the pike, let's take a swing. Let's try something different here. Let's be creative. Let's open ourselves up to a new possibility because this is a gift that will never present itself again, ever. And I hope that it doesn't. And I probably shouldn't even use the term gift given the current pandemic, but it is because we get to reinvent music education on a blank canvas for nine weeks, for 18 weeks. We get to rethink this thing and reinvent it in a way that meaning, that's meaningful for us in a way that we think best serves our students' needs, our community's needs, our school's needs. We have a blank canvas. And if we're not going to try and paint something, then I don't know what we're doing here. That's what this is about. We're going to fill that void and we're going to create something that's never been done before. Now, I'm not going to share old materials with you, but I do want to just briefly go over these two slides for those folks who weren't in last week's webinar. Now, there are three different plans that can happen that obviously we can have um, an entirely remote training. We can have an entirely in, in, in building training and we can have um, uh, a truncated training, which is where we start late and then go in building or we're in building and then in September, they cut the cord and we're back online. The key is that 
You've got to plan for all three simultaneously. You have to be prepared to do at the moment on Tuesday, teach a kid who's in the building and then on Tuesday, teach remotely. You've got to be prepared to start three weeks remote and then go three weeks in classroom and then possibly go three more weeks remote. You've got to prepare for all three and build with the worst in mind. Assume that you will not see your kids until January. Now, I don't believe that's going to happen and I'm not an alarmist and it turns out Taylor Swift's album actually is pretty good. But the bottom line is, is that if you're prepared for the worst in mind, then no matter what happens, you'll be fine. Prepare not to see kids for 18 weeks and then whatever happens, you'll be prepared to teach successfully. And that's what this is about. We got a do over in April. Whoops, I'm not prepared. Whoops, I wasn't, I don't know how to teach online. Whoops, I don't have curriculum. We don't get that same do over twice. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. No shame on me. So understanding that, we're gonna tell you how to do go through the step-by-step -step process. Pick a theme first. And you know the, what we're going to talk about today is heroes. That, but this, you can pick anything. It can be multicultural. It can be music history. It can be literature. It can be um, social causes. It can be charity based. It could be um, you know music of of time. It, it could be whatever you want it to be. This is where you get to choose something you're passionate about teaching. It could be about jazz. It could be about improv. It could be about the great choral masterworks. It could be about site. It can be whatever you want. But pick a theme for the quarter. Then find appropriate music. And I'm going to share some thoughts with you on how to do that. Then develop and layer your instructional elements. What I recommend is developing five different instructional elements. And then you can choose to use one, two, three, four, or all five of them, depending on the situations in front of you. If you've got the kids in building and you're rehearsing every day, then I might use one or two elements and maybe five, 10 minutes of class a day, or maybe an entire day. If we go offline, I may go all five elements because I got to fill in five days worth of work. Or I may feel like at the junior high, I'm going to use two of them at the at the top wind ensemble, I may use all five, but at the freshman concert band, I may use two. But develop and layer musical instructional elements. I recommend five of them. And then, again, you're prepared for the worst. You may not use all five. You may use one of them, but you're prepared and be prepared to water up and layer down your, uh, your expectations and your curriculum based on the situation that's in front of you. So in, when I decided on Monday, um, I wanted to do this webinar. Um, I made the decision I was going to go and do a deep dive because of all the people who asked for that information. I actually went and got my file folder out on what I said that I did in 1997. And it was really, it, it was almost emotional because it took me back to that moment. And it was so visceral for me because as I shared with you last week, when I left teaching after 14 years, my principal sat me down and said, tell me what your proudest moment was. And I said this, it was a tribute to heroes. That's the actual concert program. And everything I'm about to share with you is from that moment in time, 23 years ago. And when I looked at it, I did some things differently than I shared with you last week. And I was surprised how much it changed from a tribute, a concert of heroes, uh, heroes near and far to a tribute to heroes, which was in 1997. Um, but it really was a special moment for me to go back and see what was created. So I'm going to share that with you today. And again, please feel free to use as little or as much of it as you want. So the students were told to do the following five things. Number one, they had to do a historical essay. They had to pick someone from history. I talked to you about a literary element. I, I've forgotten that it had to be historical in nature to talk about a non-familial member that exhibited courageous qualities. Now, the page to the right is actually the welcome page from the concert program. All the documents you're gonna see in this slideshow are actually from that event and that night. So they had to do a two or three page report that was based on a historical person that exhibited heroic type qualities. They had to create a personal vision plan, you know, a series of questions. And what they did is they had to study someone. I mean, it could be the person that was their historical essay, or it could be someone different, but they had to do a personal vision plan about what it took for them to get there what it took for them to achieve, what college they went to, what tuition they had to pay, what training they had, what branch of the military they served in, what time that they did in, in, in different jobs to prepare for that moment. And then they had to create an actionable plan to achieve that similar pathway. The third thing that they did is they had to do a familial reflection. They had to sit down with someone in their family and interview them or talk to them about <coughs> someone from their family that had heroic type qualities. Then what they had to do is do an artistic representation of that person. And it had to be abstract. 
So the point was they couldn't just take a picture of grandma and say, grandma's my hero. They had to do a collage. They had to do a poem. They had to take many pictures and build them into an artistic statement. They had to write something. They had to draw something. They had to build something. So they had to interview that person. They had to spend time. They had to learn about them and then do an artistic representation of that person. The third thing or the fourth thing they had to do was they had to do a community service project. Um, and I had forgotten I did this. They had to do a 30 minute minimal, I think, uh, requirement of a community service project that could be done either by themselves or in tandem with others uh, that served someone else. And they had to document with either a letter from the person, I cleaned up my neighbor's yard, I, I fed to the homeless, I went to this project and painted a dilapidated building, I helped my mother clean out the shed, whatever it was. And they had to either document it with photos and write a brief paragraph, or they had to get someone to sign a letter stating that they did it. But they had to actually take action and complete a community service project. And then last but not least, they had to do a communication activity in which they reached out to someone, um, a non-family member about um, who their hero was. So they had to write someone and say, tell me about your hero. And I did these things as well. I think I wrote to over 50 people um, asking about who their hero was. And then what we did is we took those letters and we blew them up into posters and we put them all around the, the concert hall for the culminating event, which for us at that time was a concert. So the five elements were a historical essay, a professional, a, vi a personal vision plan, a familial reflection, community service, and communication. Now, again, you can use one, two, three, four, or five, or none of these elements. But the point is you can scale it. Last week, we talked about being scalable, sustainable, social, and student-centered. So that you could say, if we went offline for three weeks, all right, now we're going to work on the historical essay. Now we're going to add the, the personal vision plan and the family reflection in addition, in addition to the music. So you choose the elements, but be prepared to scale up and scale down based on the current situation. Now, here's what the timeline should look like based on what we did and based on a nine-week curricula. So in week one, you're going to schedule, or bit prior to starting, you're going to schedule everything. You're going to meet with the department chairs. You're going to send out your memos. You're going to request the facilities. You're going to um, talk to the library, reserve the space. You're going to get all of that done. Then in week one, you're going to introduce the project for the students. You're going to distribute the materials and schedule um, the time for the guidance staff and the librarians to come in and spend time with your kids. You're going to hand out the music and you're going to begin preparing. Week two, you're going to spend a day in that library. You're going to allocate that time or spend that, that classroom time remotely allocating. Say, Monday, there's no band assignment. You're going to do research online about Martin Luther King or Mother Teresa or, 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 or whoever it is that your person is. You're going to give them that time. Then you're going to also start to email your faculty and let them know what's happening in the music department and, and that you want their involvement, their participation. So for us, we had the history department come in and talk about history. And what was really cool, and we're going to talk about a little bit later in the presentation, is they were giving extra credit for the reports the kids were doing. So we were cross-branding and cross-working together and cross-collaborating um, so that my, you know, the kids' historical work was paying a benefit in the social studies class, and what they were doing in the social studies class was paying a benefit in the band and choir and orchestra class. In week three, you're going to select your narrators, and we'll talk about that. Announce the service projects and send invitations out to the concert, which is happening in just five short weeks. Then in week four, you're going to start to see the assignments come due. They've spent four weeks preparing. And what you want to do as you layer up, you want to layer down as well. So I never had more than one assignment due in one week. There were five things. So there were five weeks that the things were due. That's why we start having them due in week four. You crescendo up and you crescendo back down in terms of the student's level of engagement and the student's level of commitment. So that in week four, assignment one was due. In week five, assignment two was due. So the kids were never overwhelmed. And then in week eight, we started to prep the auditorium. All assignments were in, and in week nine, we're prepared for the culminating event. Now, again, you can scale this up. You can stretch it to 18 weeks. You can you could layer it back down and stretch it down and minimize it down to four weeks. The point is you want to always be thinking three and four and five weeks in advance. If I know that, that it's due, that assignment one is due in five weeks, then I want to introduce assignment one today. If I know 
If I know that I'm going to need the library in three weeks, then I want to reserve it today. You're always preparing for chess. What's five moves down the line? And what do I need to do today to prepare for that move down the line? So we talked a little bit about finding music. Now, this is actually the concert program that I used that evening. Please understand, you can use all sorts of different programs, all sorts of different literature, band, choir, orchestra. But what we did is I want, we chose everything that was based on a heroic theme, a heroic person, or a heroic activity. There's at dawn they slept. There's, you know, we did, so the top group did a movement for Rosa. Um, that was a really difficult piece. Uh, JFK in memoriam, which is a really nice piece and has a narration and Lincoln portrait. The symphonic band did Tis a Gift, which was written about the shooting down of airliner um, uh, 8400 over the Hudson, uh, over the Hudson Bay, um, Heritage of Freedom and the Light Eternal. And then the concert band did Jefferson, uh, Man is Words, Until Justice Rolls Down Like Water and Lindbergh Variations. So understanding that you can find any literature on any subject. And, you know, someone said, that's, well, I don't have the budget. And I said, borrow from someone. You've, and you've probably got literature that you can stretch to meet your theme inside, inside your band room, your choir room, your orchestra room right now. And then we use the program, which is on the right-hand side of the screen, we use it as a chance to educate folks about not only the piece, but about the person that the piece was written on. So there was a communal education project involved as well. Now, please remember, understand, Reduce your literature 25%. If you're used to playing grade five, play grade four. If you're used to playing grade four, play grade three. The, the, my wind ensemble, um, the movement for Rosa was the only piece that we had at scale. That's a grade five piece of literature. Everything else was grade four. And the, the reason is you're going to dedicate rehearsal time. And especially in this pandemic, you don't know that you're going to get rehearsal time. So you don't want to get to a point where, oh my God, are we going to be able to get this piece together? Are we? Because then you've lost focus. Plan for increased absences and plan for in-class in time to complete the work. The thing is, if you say to the kids, this is important, you have to walk the walk. You have to invest that time and you have to say, I'm willing to give up rehearsal processes for this. I'm willing to give up the difficulty of literature for this. And the thing is, they will play F sharps. They will play B flats. They will sing cantatas. They will play orchestral excerpts again, but they will never do this again. So invest in this now. Dream big. Do something special. So step one, decide on your theme. Step two, choose your literature. Dial it back 25% demand. Dial it back for 25% fewer rehearsals. Dial it back for time to do the work in class. So for my group, and I, I actually looked at my, my lesson planning, I gave up every Monday to this project. We didn't pull out our horns a single Monday for nine weeks. We were doing something, learning something, completing something, or given time for them to work on something. Pick your theme. Find your music, layer your instruction. So this is how we graded it. This is how I chose to grade it. This is the actual grading rubric that I used. It was 30% for the written components, 10% for the vision plan, 30% um, for the familiar affection, 20% for the service project, and 10% for the letter. <coughs> now keep in mind, you want to invest weight. You want to invest weight into the things that are most important to you. So if that familial reflection matters to them, make it worth 50%. If you don't want to do the writing project, make it worth 5%. You know, <clears throat> I apologize. If I had this to do over again, I would remove the 15% for grammar and the writing project. I remember spending hours grading papers versus just being able to read them for enjoying them. You know, I, I would probably change that requirement and I would probably add a social media component onto this. Um, I might do um, a visual component because this was 1997. So I would change this now to reflect current times. But remember, sustainability. The point, though, is in grading is, is please, please, please err on the side of the kid. This is this is not a time to be a hard ass over a semicolon. You want them to embrace the experience and walk away going, that was really special. Not walk away going, gosh, I, did, I didn't get the semicolon. I got an 89.5 on my thing because of my first sentence wasn't capitalized. That's not what, for me, that's not the takeaway from this. So put emphasis in the part that matters the most to you. And when grading, err on the side of the kid. Now, some other thoughts you want to think about. Um, 
you need to write to as many people as humanly possible to get your letters back. The letter, and I couldn't believe how much I smiled when I opened this, um, that's the actual letter that I got. Remember I told you last week, I got to the personal aid to the President of the United States. It took me a while. I had to be tenacious. Um, I got two senators, three congressperson, a mayor, all my governing board members, my administrators, several local business owners, dignitaries. I had a file folder of letters that we blew up into posters. But you need to write early. My biggest regret in reading this is that I didn't write earlier. Could I have gotten a letter from President Clinton? I don't know, probably not, but I wish that I had done it earlier. Engage your parents and community leaders. You wanna get that out early so that they know what you're doing. When you're talking about music advocacy, that's what we're talking about. I mean, imagine your superintendent going, God, I didn't realize this was what band was about, choir was about, orchestra was about. When they're talking about cutting back, you wanna invest in, in, in your, nothing is better in music education advocacy than being a great teacher. That is the best advocacy we can do. And reach out to your colleagues. By the end, by the end of this, you're going to see that, that we involved the library staff because we used all of their research facilities. We involved our counseling staff because they helped create the personal vision plan. We involved our social studies department because they helped the kids do the historical analysis. We involved our art department because they helped create the, the actual concert program. We involved our administration team because they did the rehearsing with us and they did the, the, the narration. The bottom line is if I could go back and figure out a way to do science and PE, I would have involved every single member of the campus. There's no, when we're talking about our programs are in danger and I'm worried about what, the greatest music advocacy you can do is to be a great teacher. The greatest advocacy you can do is to be a great teacher. Issue press releases. Let people know what you're doing 10 days out in advance. You may get coverage. And again, what you're doing is that's about sharing the good work of your students, but it's also about music advocacy. And then create, this is a, something I didn't have to do 22 years ago, but I would have to do now is create a social place where kids can engage. You know, make kids do something together, put them in a Zoom room. But I would, if I were to do this again, I certainly would add a social engagement piece to it where they had to work collaboratively, work as a section, work as a team, communicate and connect with each other. But the other thing that it does is it creates positive peer pressure. You know, for the 30%, they're like, well, I, I'm not writing the essay. And all of a sudden, essays are popping up on Facebook and kids are on Instagram. When do you see my artistic project? All of a sudden, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone's actually doing this. I better get on the ball. I'm a huge believer in positive peer pressure. That when you can show the kid that's on the fence, the kids that's on the bubble, the kid that's on the wrong side of the fence, that 95% of the kids are on the right side of the fence, they jump the fence real quick. Because everyone wants to be a part of them. One of my favorite tricks to do, and I'll share this with you, maybe it's mean, I don't know, but let's say I had a piece of paperwork do a trip request, whatever do for all the kids or a form do. I would love to like two days before go, you know, um, guys, don't forget that form. I think I've got all but like two or three in. So if you're one of the two or three, just make sure you get it in. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Now, I was missing 50 of the forms, but now every kid thinks he's the only one that didn't turn it in. I'm a big believer in positive peer pressure. So the social piece not only gives kids a creative place to engage and be a part in, of, of something bigger than themselves, but it creates positive peer pressure. Collaborate with your art department or graphic design team to create the design of the program. I really believe, you know, if kids are going to invest nine weeks preparing for a concert, the program should look like I invested nine weeks in preparing it. So create that engagement with your art department. I bet they would love to do it, or maybe there's a parent or someone. And then look for pieces where you can engage your administration. And if it's not a piece of narration, maybe they could come out and do an entry level announcement about the historical figure or about the person um, that you're singing about or playing about. But the more people you, you can engage, and I used, in, uh, we had nine pieces, and I truly had nine engagement pieces. I think six of my pieces had narration, and I created ways for three more people involved and it involved my mayor, I involved my superintendent, my associate superintendent, I involved um, my four administrators and I involved my booster president. And so that I could get those folks and in, in capture their involvement so that they could see it wasn't just the concert, that they had to come in and rehearse with the group, the narration, so I could cue it. And I, they, I would know, speak a little slower, we need to stretch this here or speak a little faster, or I'll slow it back so we can fill that gap. And so they were in my building two or three times during rehearsal and they walked out going, gosh, he's a taskmaster. He goes bell to bell. I was two minutes late and he was already in rehearsal. 
create those engagements in one way or another and then reach for the stars in terms of guests. Uh, we had John McCain, you'll see his letter um, in the next page. And what was really cool is when, I, when he was writing his letter, he got so engaged in the project, he kept reaching back. And they said, you know, do you mind if I come to the concert? Uh, I got letters, we, had, we were scheduled to have Rosa Parks as the concert. And I was reading all my letters that I, I was writing to her personal aide, and she was scheduled, plane ticket bought, she got a car accident two weeks before, it was a bus accident actually, two weeks before um, the contest or the concert, so she couldn't show up to it. But I mean, I never thought in a million years she'd show up, but all I had to do was ask. I never thought I'd get John McCain, a presidential contender at um, my event, uh, but all I had to do was ask, dream big, a newscaster, a famous figure, a star, a, a Twitter, an influencer. So, and get your kids involved. Who would they like to see? And get them involved in writing a music ad campaign. But if you do that, if you involve your community members, if you involve your admin, if you choose good literature, if you choose five instructional elements, if you create a reasonable, rational rubric that is student-centered and you engage the kids in a social way, you're now setting the stage for a pretty spectacular event. A pretty spectacular event. Now, it can seem overwhelming, but we have literature for you. And I have never, ever tried to push any product on you ever at any webinar. And, and I don't even email about my product. I'm the world's worst salesman. But we do have this curriculum. So Heroes Near and Far is a piece I did with Richard Saucedo five years ago. Um, I, I believe so much in this project. I, um, I, I commissioned a work from Richard Saucedo, and it's a five-movement work. Um, that has curricula that matches it. And it's really cool because the way we structured it is um, the five movements, we chose the five characteristics of heroes and their compassion, courage, um, um, commitment, you know, and five characteristics. And then we, he wrote a movement based on those characteristics. And you can utilize it exactly as it is, or you can alter it. You can take the curricula and use it with your own music, or you can take the curriculum and use it exactly with the music. You can do movements one through three, four, five, or you can do just movements two, just movement three in a concert. And it's, it's structured so that there's an attainable movement for virtually every grade level. So if you're beginning, uh, if you're a beginning middle school, there is a movement there that you can play. And you can even invite professional musicians to sit in. I was thinking about this last night. Like get symphony players to come in. If you don't think it's attainable, get high school kids to come in and play or do what it takes to make it attainable for your kids. Water it down, water it up. And then what we're going to do is I've already created, there's a Facebook group. And it's for integrated thematic instruction. Um, so you don't have to use heroes near and far, but if you want to talk to each other throughout the country, you can join it right now. I built it last night. It's facebook.com forward slash heroes near and far. Just search heroes near and far. And there it is. So you don't have to do this alone. And we've built the curricula. And in the email I sent out last week, um, we gave you a sample of the curricula. Now, if you want to buy the music, it's available. It's available through uh, all the, the music retail sources. And I'm gonna give you a coupon code. I reached out to Hal Leonard and I'm gonna get you 25% off the piece, if you're 20% off the piece, if you use the coupon code HEROES. And if you need the curriculum, you can get that through my site. Um, and it's, it's very affordable. And if money's an issue, just reach out to me and I will take care of you. I don't want 1999 to stand between you and doing something really, really, really special. But the thing is, even if you don't do the music, it can be a springboard and you can copy the text. There's a parent letter there. There's an administrator letter. There's a great, everything is in there. And when the kids are done, when the kids are done with this, it's, a, it's eight pages. They literally fill it out, sign it and turn it in. It, that's their, they can staple their essay to it. It's done. This becomes their grading rubric and you can actually fill out the grading rubric, put your comments in right here, hand it back to them and that's their grade. And then they have a memory book from their high school time. They have a memory book of what their thoughts and ideals and heuristic aspirations were. Imagine having that when you're 52. I would give anything to have that. So I thought I'd share just a little bit. This is, I went back, um, I went back and it's been five, five years since this was released and I haven't listened to it in forever. And I went back and listened to it and I knew Movement 3 was my favorite because I think Richard does um, an amazing job an amazing job with colors and textures. Um, and movement three, I think, is his specialty. And I went back and listened to it and I got a little emotional. And I got a little emotional because I went and read the comments and I realized that this piece is being played right up into the pandemic. 
there were comments from kids going, oh, this is my favorite work. And I'm like, oh, my kids are actually, they're doing this. It's out there. It's still out there and it's alive. But then I got a little emotional because I realized I've never heard the piece played live, ever. I've never been in the building and experienced this live. I had only heard MIDI files. I didn't realize this recording was out there. So I'm going to share movement three with you. Before I leave this earth, I will conduct movement three. Before I leave this earth, somewhere with someone, I will conduct movement three. And if you do this project, as I was sitting here listening to that, I, I thought, God, if, if, if you do this project, get me in on a Skype call with your kids. I want to hear this. The five movements are around five incredible characteristics. And they're leveled up so that regardless of your skill set of your kids, you'll be able to play one of the five movements, if not all five. And if you need to involve professional musicians, involve them. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Um, I will conduct that before I leave this earth. Um, these materials are available. Uh, Sheet Music Plus is how Hell Leonard is handling it. You can do an instant download. Kids can download their parts. Um, and you get 20% off if you use the hero's code. Um, that is the actual music. The curriculum is on the right. That's available through my website. The original instructional design um, was that this was going to be a part of the actual music. And at the very last minute, uh, the publisher didn't feel comfortable. It was too out there. And they just said, you know, we're not going to publish the curriculum. We're just not going to do that. It's too out there. We, I don't, we don't know. So that's why the curriculum is not embedded in the actual piece of literature. So you need to purchase the literature from Hal Leonard or from streetmusicplus.com forward slash heroes, 20% off. Uh, you can also go through Music and Arts and Pepper. They have it in stock. I just double checked. And you can get the curriculum through my website and it's, uh, it's instantly downloadable. Again, if money is an issue. Uh, you let me know. Uh, I will take care of you. I will take care of you. Uh, it could be cool. So remember the plan. Pick your theme. It doesn't matter what the theme is. If it doesn't excite you, it won't excite them. They get excited by what you get excited about. Pick your music. And 
I can make a B flat tie to any theme. So don't let music be your constraint. And it doesn't have to be all five pieces. Maybe it's just one piece. Develop written musical instructional elements. I recommend five that layer up or layer down based on your specific event and create a culminating event or activity. Now remember, that doesn't have to be a concert or it doesn't have to be a concert right now. As I mentioned uh, last week, if this were me, I would get Michael Markowski on the phone. And by the way, if you wanna contact Michael and do a commission, he's easily reachable. Um, I've known Michael since he was in high school. He went to school just down the street. He was in my roommate's band. Uh, and Michael is, is kind as he is smart. He's as genuine as he is brilliant. He would be who I would reach out to right now. And I'd say, Michael, let's do a piece. And I'd spend nine weeks with the kids creating it. And then he would spend six months writing it and then we'd rehearse it in the fourth quarter and that would be our culminating activity. It might be a charity drive. It might be um, a canned food drive. It might be um, a, a concert for healthcare workers. Uh, it might be a virtual concert. A culminating event doesn't necessarily mean a performance. We've always said, well, it's about the journey. Well, then let's back it up. Let's invest in the journey. Let's walk the walk. It's not about the festival or the rating we get. Well, then let's walk the walk. Let's make it not about the performance. Make it sustainable, scalable, social, and student-centered. And these people, these kids, this community will remember you. This is a brave new world that's been thrust upon us. And how we respond to it says everything about who we are as teachers, who we are as people. These kids are looking to us. Our school communities are looking to us. Let us stand up and be the model be the model of how to respond in the times of crisis. And I've been saying it over, nobody remembers a person who runs in, out of the burning building. They remember the people who run into the burning building to help others. Listen, I'm as concerned, I'm as frightened, I'm as uh, confused by what's going on as all of you. A man, my goal through all this, and I don't know why I'm sharing this, but, and I keep saying to myself, Scott, no matter what happens, five years from now, regardless where you are, what profession you're in or what happened, you need to be able to look back and say, you stood up. You were accounted for, and you, you did everything you could. This is our moment. I've been watching a guy named Bob Goff lately. And he's, his thing is, have a conversation not with who you are now. Have a conversation with you 10 years in the future. That's the conversation you want to be having. Because if you, if, if you know where you want to be in 10 years, then you know what you need to do today. And in 10 years, I'm having a conversation with a guy that said, you were everything. That's what this is about. So one last thing I want to share with you, and this is a big deal. Um, next week is going to be huge. You're going to want to register, pre-register for this webinar. Um, I've been teasing the fact I've been hard at work on three big projects. Uh, one is, um, is this online uh, integrated thematic instruction. The other is a series of videos that we release starting tomorrow. And if you haven't signed up for the free leadership videos, it's five weeks of three lessons a week to your kids, free of charge. The filming, the writing, the implementation of the software has been significant. But the biggest thing I've been working on, and maybe the biggest thing I've ever done in my life and in my career, other than raising two children and marrying a beautiful woman, is going to be released next week. I have been processing and how to rethink how we teach music education. And I want to share it with you. Next week, Friday, July 30th at 1 p.m., I'm going to release the biggest thing I've ever done in my life. And I want you to be there. Join sll.com forward slash big announcement. It may infuriate you. It may amuse you. It may entertain you. It may educate you, but you will think about the very essence of music education and not just the how we do it, but the why we do it and are we walking the walk. 
be there for that moment. Seven days from now, be there for that moment. I'm excited to share it with you. Um, with that, uh, know that you've got this and I believe in you and I'm here. If you need to reach out to me, Scott at scottlang.net, you can reach out to me. You can call me at 480-577-5264. You can text me. My phone is right here. If you're struggling, if you have a question, if you need uh, just a good laugh, if you need someone to share a beverage with, you call me, you text me, you email me. I respond to every single communication. And I love it when someone picks up the phone and goes, well, I'm surprised you picked it up. I'm like, well, who'd you think was going to pick it up? My dog? I can't believe you emailed me back. Well, since, you know, my 10-year-old refuses to answer my emails, I guess it'll be me. I'm here for you, and I want to help you because you got this. Real solutions to real problems in real time for real heroes, teachers. You. You. That concludes uh, today's uh, webinar. Um, we thank you for joining us both uh, in the Zoom room and uh, on our Facebook page. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, now I'm going to uh, answer questions in the chat box. So if you'd like to stick around and get your questions answered, you can put those in the chat box. Andrew is gonna help me manage that as Andrew is just everything to me and incredible. Uh, he's helping manage that. Um, so if you have questions, stick around. And if you want to talk to me, you can actually turn on your mic and turn on your camera. I'd be happy to have that conversation with you. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you for um, everything that you do for kids. And with that being said, this concludes today's webinar. All right, let's see what we got in the chat room. Um, I know someone earlier asked about, um, okay, so what are some non-performance options for the culminating activity? I would do, I would center it around personal service um, and charitable acts. So I would have the kids do something um, at their home or for a neighbor or at a nursing home. I would have them decorate something. I, so I would, I would culminate it around an act of service that's tangible. We, we have this many cans of food. We have this many hours dedicated to charitable service. And I'd have a live dashboard where the kids could see it move. Um, <clears throat> I would then do a performance opportunity around it. It just might not be in the first nine weeks. So you can have a culminating event that has a performance element, but it just doesn't happen immediately. So that's something uh, to think about. Um, I think also someone asked about orchestra stuff. You're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to talk to Hal Leonard about that. Um, I don't get involved in the publishing, but I do know that you could use the tuba part. You could use the violin part. Uh, you could transpose uh, the trumpet part um, and you could create an orchestral version without a ton of difficulty. And there are lots of composers and, and people who are good at finale that uh, would be happy to help you with that if you don't have that skill set. Um, let's see, what else questions do we have? Can I get a copy of the letter you sent? I don't know that I have it. Now, this was in 1997. I don't even think there was email back then. Uh, I would be glad to share it with you if I had it. I didn't see it in my files yesterday. I'll have to do a deep dive. And if I have it, I'll drop it in the Facebook group. So uh, go to facebook.com and search Heroes Near and Far. Um, so you can search. And if I have it, I'll put it up there. Um, from Heidi, you brought me to the starting port. I've been desperately searching for it. Thank you, Heidi. I appreciate that. Um, what is that phone number again? 480-577-5264. That's 480-577-LANG, L-A-N-G. So that's where you can reach me at. Um, thank you, Andrew, for popping the Facebook group. How often did you use the integrated thematic units? Did you organize a whole year? And No, I only did it once at each school. You know, I don't think you can put lightning in, in a, you can't capture lightning twice. So I did that one time at my very first school that I was at for 10 years. Um, and that was Heroes Near and Far. And then when I went to a new school, the last five years of my career, um, I did an integrated thematic unit, but it was on Moby Dick. And I used um, Of Sailors and Whales and, uh, with, um, with uh, um, Francis, Mac uh, uh, Francis Macbeth's Of Sailors and Whales and Moby Dick. So um, I only did it once at each school. My next, what I really wanted to do 
um, was do it integrate the Mac unit on businesses. I wanted the kids to create a business inside the music space, a recording engineer, composer, drill writer, whatever that was, that was going to be my next integrated thematic project. I was going to involve my business department and kids had to build spreadsheets and business plans. And so I wanted them to think about <clears throat> the different opportunities to have a career in music outside of playing in a symphony, music therapy, music education, private lessons, engravers, publicists, um, music uh, representatives, agents, <clears throat> Um, concert promoters, there's all sorts of careers and I wanted people to be aware of those. So that was gonna be my next, my next thing. Um, Tani, you keep referencing next week presentation. Any chance you'll represent that one? Um, I don't know that these were connected to each element. So Tani, be it next week's webinar. Be it next week's webinar. I, I am not a good secret keeper, I've not. And I've been working on this for over a year and I've been able to keep it a secret and I've promised myself I won't leak it. Be it next week's webinar. It's, it's for K-12, but be it next week's webinar. Um, Scott, I'm thinking about doing a cultural theme from Jared. Um, for my middle school, he got it at Jared. Um, we're going online through the first quarter. What are some culminating events outreach that would be appropriate with a cultural theme? So maybe they could reach out to cultural leaders, a pastor, a priest, um, someone from uh, the Black Lives Matter music. Maybe it's from a, a museum. We have the Min Museum. Um, they have cultural attaches and representatives who could talk about the different music from different cultures. Maybe they could be pen pals with um, musicians from those cultures. And, and you know, with Google Translator, you can do that now. I would have it be online Zoom. I would have it be online interviews. I would have it be online research and I'd use Google Classroom. Um, but I think I, I think getting a, finding a band that would be a pen pal from a different, from even cultural inner city. You know, if there's an inner city teacher in the Facebook group and you're in the suburbs, someone from the South and you're from the North, someone from a big place and small place, rich, poor, um, uh, African-American, white, uh, um, you're Asian. You, I would, that's the beauty of the, the digital world and, and, the, and the World Wide Web is that's what I would do. I would try and find a pen pal band, a pen pal orchestra, a pen pal choir, and you could do some incredible stuff, incredible stuff with that. So speaking about culture, you know, that would be what I would do. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable with them connecting with other kids, you could do a Zoom chat room and bring people into the room with all of those kids. Um, but you could do that and it would be incredible. Is there more curriculum that can be purchased to get us through the year if needed? Um, yes, there's, I'm, I've also got some leadership stuff. We have a leadership class. So we have the integrate thematic instruction. We have the brand new uh, videos uh, that we were hosting the registration at jointsll.com and we will shortly after this webinar is over. Um, but so we have leadership curriculum, they'll get you through five weeks. I also have an online leadership class that I can clone and make it leadership university for Smith Orchestra for Sally Mae Junior High. And then your kids are in a safe, secure environment. Uh, and it's, it's free to them by creating a digital space classroom just for them. So I have those three things. Um, Andrew and I are working on other offerings to help you. If you have things you're looking for specifically or needs, um, uh, please know that we are, uh, we are there for you. And we're, send us an email saying, this is what I need. Or if you could develop this, that would be great. Um, you know, I'm the guy who dreams big and Andrew's the guy who builds it so it works. And he already posted a new link uh, as I'm talking to you in real time. So if you tell us what you need, we will do our best to um, develop, it. develop it. I'm a middle school choir that is fully remote learning. And he, is anyone aware of core work similar to Heroes Near and Far? The beauty of choral works is they have words. I think this is easier to do for choir. I really do. Uh, now, I'm not familiar with a ton of choral works, um, you know, but uh, Cloths of Heaven. Uh, my choir director did that and he invited me to listen to it. And it may be the prettiest thing I've ever heard. And I was going to turn it into a marching band show. I don't know who the composer was, but I remember going, this is insane. There's music from musicals um, that are about heroic people, whether it's Hamilton or, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Come From Away. Um, that, that, that would be a great concert to do. So I think it's actually easier with choir to do this because of the words. So um, if anybody wants me to, you don't want me to sing with your choir, trust me. Um, 
If anyone wants more ideas for programming, I do. A, I did a clinic last summer. So Carol Turner at Carol.Turner at crumbisd.net has some resources. You can reach out to her. Um, you're going to do a unit around Halloween. Good job, Tim. I know we talked yesterday about that. Um, uh, will this be recorded? I'd like to share it with someone who could not be there. I, if you're talking about today, all my webinars are recorded. Um, next week's, um, we, will be re we will be sharing more than just a webinar with you. Um, but again, pre-register for that at uh, joinsl.com forward slash big hyphen announcement. Um, last week's webinar, along with all my webinars are available at scottlang.net. Click on COVID resources and all 11 webinars are up there along with the slide deck so that you have all that information. Um, folks of the folk songs of the 60s and 70s. So I, yeah, that's a great one. I had thought about, you know, you could do one on uh, civil disobedience. What a great time to do a unit on that. You know, and I was talking to someone on the phone about this. And I said, I wouldn't choose current topics. I think they would become political and polarizing and might create a problem with your parents. But I would choose civil di disobedience from 1772 through 1972 or something along those lines. Or if you did modern civil disobedience, um, you would have to be, just be careful about how you framed it and how you structured it so that it wasn't distracting to what you were trying to teach. Uh, so I think that is something to think about. Uh, Google Translator is in its beta form. Just Google it. It's out there somewhere. Oh my God, there's 58 new messages. Um, link. Um, so thank you, Andrew. Put the link up in the chat box for our free curriculum. If you do that, listen to Hear Me Well, sign up for the Band app. Not only are they... Um, providing it to you, um, but you can do enhanced learning. So you can create a band and go to the band app and create a band app for Smith Marching Band. Then you can take that curricula, put it in your band where all your kids are. You can host discussion groups. You can view kids who viewed it. You can assign a grade to watch in the video. You can do chat boards. You can do parental involvement. You, you can do a wide range of other things. I'll also be doing live uh, chats about this project inside the band app. It's safe, secure, and it's an incredible communication collaboration tool. Regi and even if you don't use it with your kids, which you should, um, Register for with it as a director so that you get the director content that's provided inside the band app. That starts at 8 a.m. tomorrow. We've been working on it for weeks and uh, it comes to life tomorrow at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. The first unit drips out. And, and through the genius of Andrew, we've actually created a way that you can choose your start date. So if you don't start school for six more weeks, choose the start date and the curriculum will drip to your inbox in six weeks or five weeks, or four, or three, or two, or one, or tomorrow, on tomorrow. You choose your start date and we'll get that to you um, at the right time. And we've done it all for you. Um, getting to know you activity, a truckload of your wonderful selection. Uh, just wondering if there might be something new out there. I don't know, I'd have to do a Google search, but again, by the way, if someone would love to manage that Facebook group and really engage in it and do a deep dive, that would be fantastic. If you shoot me an email um, and let me know you're interested, I'd be happy to let someone else administer that group, um, especially during these next couple of weeks while we're finishing up this big project that we're working on. Um, I would love that. Someone who's a little more social savvy, maybe we need an Instagram page. I don't know. Maybe we need a Snapchat page. Maybe we need uh, a, a Pinterest page. I, I don't know. Um, but I would love it if someone wants to take, uh, take control of that. Uh, yeah, someone wrote, uh, I would definitely involve the students in this process in terms of choosing the theme. You, I mean, you could spend three weeks just letting your curricula is choosing the theme. Like, how cool is that? Choosing the music, play five pieces, assign it to the kids. Kids, your assignment uh, at, at week one is let's choose a theme. Assignment week two is go to the Pepper website and find 15 pieces and rate them one to 15 and we meet again. You choose the concert literature. We need a ballad, we need a fanfare, and we need a, a, or a larger symphonic work. It can be no more difficult than grade three. You set the parameters, make them find the music. They would love that. Make them say, God, right? I didn't know about this Robert Sheldon dude. He's pretty good. We should do this. That would be, you could spend nine weeks just preparing to do this activity. Music of the decades, music of the centuries, unity, togetherness. 
Um, when you commission a piece, have your students collaborate with a composer. So Michael Markowski did a collaboration process with um, Chris, I can't remember his name, in Wisconsin. And his kids actually chose the themes and, and chose, the assignment was come up with different themes. And I meant to share it with you in this webinar and I forgot, so I'm a bad webinar presenter. But if you reach out to Michael Markowski, he'll send you that document. And you can see that these middle school kids had insanely cool theme ideas. And then Michael Markowski wrote the music around the kids' themes. It, it, it's brilliant teaching by Chris, a uh, uh, middle school teacher in Wisconsin. Um, brilliant teaching. Uh, and brilliant composing by Michael. He is my new favorite composer. Um, uh, my wife did a, a unit on civil disobedience and protest. That's awesome. Um, musical. Um, do you have to sign up for the band app or the curriculum first to get them to integrate? So you'll get the curriculum delivered to you via email, but in order to you can watch it on a URL that's not inside the band app, but in order to expand upon it, run polls, talk to your kids, run that's all inside the band app. They built the infrastructure so we could do that. And we built the curriculum and the content. So it really was a, a wonderful partnership. Where do you get the band app? It's available on the Google Play or the app, the, the app store. Once you download it, sign up for an account, then search for musical minutes, musical minute. And then you'll see the logo come up. You'll see my little face. It's a round little face. It says musical minute. Join that and you'll get it and turn your notifications on tomorrow at 8 a.m. Arizona time. It'll say a new post has occurred in the band app. What happens is every Friday, every Saturday, you'll get a director overview, um, video and written content. And then shortly after that, you'll get the very first lesson unit on Saturday, every Saturday. The goal is that you would share that content with your students on a Sunday, the very next day. Then what happens is at Monday's rehearsal or Monday's Zoom meeting or Monday's online content, the kids have something to do to talk about. So we've built curriculum for you for Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now, could you stretch it out and do it only on Mondays and do it for 15 weeks? Yes, you could. Absolutely, you could do it for a whole semester if it's just Mondays. Um, but every video has an, a call to action at the end of it. And tomorrow's rehearsal, in tomorrow's class, be prepared to talk about X. We've actually built actionable call to actions. And the goal is by making kids better musicians and making them better rehearsal technicians and better people, you make better ensembles. We believe, we believe that you should have a better band choir or orchestra because of these videos. And again, they'll be delivered to you every Saturday, every Monday and every Wednesday for you to share with your students remotely Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday for them to use, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And if you're in class and you don't want to go through all the hassle, you can just show the videos and spend five minutes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and talk about them. But it's sequentially designed so that unit one is big picture and unit 15 is embrace the grind, baby. You're 15 weeks in, let's go. Uh, so it, it's designed to be sequentially structured and timed appropriately to your rehearsal process. I've just purchased the Heroes Near and Far, confirmed the curricula is digital. Yes, you get a PDF from my website. Um, I have printed copies, but I only have about five left because it was five years ago that we did this. Um, can we sign up for the curriculum now, view the videos and sign up again once school starts? So there's playing time. Yes, yes, you can, you can re-sign up. We don't know what it'll look like after the latest sign up date is September 12th. So Andrew and I will have to revisit it if you want to start it after September 12th. But you can sign up now and you can view, you can get the curriculum sent to you starting on September 12th and it will drip to you. But then you'll be able to go into the band app and view it um, in real time as we release it, which will be over the next five weeks. So by the time September 12th rolls around, you'll have seen all the curricula inside the band app and you'll be able to talk with other directors and see how they used it. Again, collaboration is the key here. I love it, Betsy. We're not curriculum extension. We're curriculum essential. Well said. Uh, just Google, uh, sir, uh, could you share Michael's information? Uh, just Google Michael Markowski. His website comes up. Um, I think it's Mark, uh, michaelmarkowski.com or just Google it. His website's beautiful, um, by the way. And he's quirky. He's funny. You'll like him. Um,
huge momentum builder to let the kids music pick it on pepper that's a great idea so i'm getting through the 96 new messages um the curricula is relevant to band choir or orchestra and relevant from middle school up could it be relevant for elementary school yes but you would have to water it way 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 down but could my fifth grade son do it yes yeah he could he could interview a family member and make a make a, a really brief powerpoint about it he could do a community service project for 15 minutes so you know it's it's up to you to understand the needs of your community the needs of your students and the situation you're in and and scale it appropriate to uh to your situation mine isn't the right way it's my way and it only works for me and to be frank with you looking at it, at it now i would change a couple things because it's different now I would involve remote social learning. I would involve the internet. I would involve multimedia. I would involve Instagram. I would involve those things because um, I think that, you know, those, are, those weren't tools available to me 30 years ago. Let's see if there's any more questions and then uh, I, will, uh, I will leave you be and let you go about your way. It's 11.05 and I'm five minutes over. Um, my New Horizons band is rehearsing on Zoom. Uh, that's awesome. And uh, it's good for these older adults to see the kids and the kids to see the older adults. Again, if you would like to continue the conversation, not just with me, but with everyone else, um, join the Facebook group. And if you would all, right now there's 246 of you um, online. If you would all, all, just go to your local Facebook group that you're a part of and share these resources. Um, uh, the Scott Lang leadership, the heroes leadership, and uh, the the ability to sign up for the free leadership curriculum. And boy, that that those videos are good K through 12. Um, I mean, six through 12 for sure, maybe five through 12. My son could watch them. In fact, my wife has said we're going to make our son watch them. Um, so if you would share, please, we can't help people if they don't know where we are. And next week is going to be groundbreaking. And we can't tell people if they don't know who we are and we don't know who they are. So please take this time to share. And if you have any other questions, um, uh, can you go over again how to find the musical moments on the band app? Um, go to the band app, download the app. And then inside the band app, there's different bands. And by the time I finish explaining this, Andrew's likely to just, you know, when you register, for musical moments where Andrew told you to register, there's a video that tells you exactly how to do it. When you register, you get a thank you page and it tells you exactly how to do that. So rather than listen to me blather on, go there and um, it will tell you exactly how to do it. With that being said, um, again, reach out, send an email, share the message to about this activity, about this curricula, about what we're doing, about be part of the music, and about next week. Um, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. I'm going to turn my uh, computer off and let you folks get back uh, to your day. I'll stick around the chat room for just a few more minutes. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for all that you do for kids. Thanks, Andrew, for uh, helping run this thing. And uh, take care. Good luck. God bless, stay safe, wear your masks, and have a great day. <music>